Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. I'm Ken Decker. And I'm Yetta Decker. And we form part of the Decker team. Probably the most comedic part of it anyways. I don't think so. No, you don't think we're the most funny? I am at least. You gotta say I'm funny. Uh, funny how? Funny like don't give up your day job funny. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 like that. <laughs> yeah, yes, like that. Like See? that. See, that so was you, funny. We don't want him to give up his day job, except he's funny in a way that I don't always get it. Oh. Uh-huh. Is that the joke teller or the joke receiver? Okay, well, I'm I don't know. That was funny. No, See? it wasn't. It was cynical. Oh, okay. So, anyway, we're talking today. <laughs> around real estate questions, questions that people have asked us or ought to ask or often ask somebody before they actually hire them to help them buy or sell a home. Mm -hmm. Sell a home is primarily what we're focusing on in these shows. There's a lot of questions. Well, it's not so much the number of questions, it's how slow you are at answering them. Oh, no, wait, I'm answering them. I guess it's a how detailed. So is that Danish humor? That was Danish humor. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So it's how detailed an answer that we're giving. So we have promised that we will create. I've promised anyway, which means you have to do this with me because when I'm in, you're in. So we will do a show where we answer the questions very succinctly. So for somebody that wants a quick snapshot, 30 minutes with all 20, that's about 25 questions probably in total. Otherwise, you can watch five or six various shows to get all of the answers. This is part four, and we're pretty confident based on how many questions are left and how... Maybe part five. <laughs> there might, well, there'll be a part five, maybe even a part six. Who knows? So anyway, you've got questions for me, and I apparently have yeah. answers. <clears throat> yeah. So what if I need other vendors, resources, contractors, whatever, because what you're telling me to do is beyond my scope. Well, or maybe first, I've done some really handyman, poor man renovations and they need to be fixed up. That sometimes happens, doesn't yes. it? You've even done some of those. I could speak specifically to Ken Decker about this one. No. Yes. Like, now I think you should have a license for a caulking gun because I'm dangerous with a caulking gun. You are dangerous with a caulking gun. <laughs> so we don't let him do that anymore? Not at all. Anyhow. Um, So as far as having resources for you to be able to get those things done, and it's not so much that we're going to tell you to do something, we're going to make recommendations as to what things are most ideal to get done, the things that will give you the biggest return on investment. We have some time, we may want to invest some of that time and a little bit of dollars into some minor, sometimes even major, generally minor though, (coughs) renovations, repairs, updates, maintenance, maybe some delayed maintenance that wasn't done regularly for a few years and now all of a sudden we have a little bit extra to do. So those things, some people could do themselves. Other times you know people and so if you have relationships with somebody that does those things that you require doing or want to get done, then absolutely utilize their services. And if not, we have invested the better part of our 30-year career, almost 30 years now, developing relationships with great people that provide services that we can pass on to you or product sales. so many, a couple hundred actually over the time. And so if you're one of our clients, then often what we'll do too, if you have a service or a business, then we're going to want to support you as you support us. We tend to test out or experience the majority of the folks that we're going to recommend, especially when it's a service industry kind of thing, a little different if you're selling a product. We don't have to test every product. Have tested products though. I know in the early days, I didn't know how well a Santa Plus toilet would work. And I was coming across them in a fair number of homes. And so we installed one because then we could talk intelligibly about the experience of living with one versus a tank in the ground if you're in a country property Mm -hmm. and you want an additional basement bathroom. Um, or a bathroom at all downstairs. And so, yes, we have many service providers. One that we have that's actually kind of fun now is our son in love decided to go into the renovation business and he actually owns a company called Solid Rack, Solid Rack, Solid Rock 
Renault's and uh, he has racks in his shed. That's what I was thinking about. So in his trailer, which he takes with him on job sites, he's actually built racks and shelving to put all of his materials, which is kind of unique. So he's very organized, very meticulous, very detail oriented. And in fact, will give us amazing opportunity to show a home um, in the best light. And so he's somebody you can hire. If not him, then there are certainly many others that are uh, we can access, give you access to as well, including cleaning people that clean houses, That's people helpful. that paint houses, people that, and maybe it's a service. Maybe you even just need your dog groomed because not because it's around the house, but just because <laughs> it's around living. And so whether it's a therapist that you're looking for, whether it's a hairdresser, babysitters for date night, pretty much anything we're going to have somebody that we've worked with that we can or that we know of that we trust that we can pass along to you and by no means do we want to interfere with an existing relationship if there's already a great relationship we want to leave those in place and simply augment those connections that you already have and so if you have a realtor that you're interviewing that can't help you with some of those things recognize you're just going to have more stress in your life because you're going to have to check with lots of different resources maybe use the internet to google more and then you don't really know whether you've got somebody that's great or not so it takes a lot of pressure off having somebody that can answer yes to that question yeah okay great now speaking of knowing that we're hiring somebody that's great uh, do you have references that you can give or the Decker team can give to sellers who yeah. are looking at hiring? Absolutely. Us? So what has happened over the years is lots of our clients unsolicited will send us testimonials. Not usually video testimonials on occasion. Most of the time it's a written testimonial or it's a note or a letter or an email or a text message saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for specifically this. So those are available. We post some of them. We don't do a great job of putting that word out. We'll get better. We'll get better <laughs> at telling you now, what, what others are saying. what we've been doing is sometimes when people will send us a great reference, we'll ask them, hey, would you like to come on to one of the Inside Track on real estate shows and talk about your experience with the Decker team? So those are great for references. Just watch a couple of those shows. Absolutely. And there's probably a dozen or so of those shows in our archives, some very recent ones, some further back, some from sellers, some from buyers, some from relocating sellers, some from sellers that buy and sell, probably some that are single parent homes, some that are just that are an individual, some that are group families where we've got multi-generational in the same family. Mm -hmm. Some where it's younger folks, some where it's folks our age or older. Um, and so it's kind of neat. because You couldn't say older when you said yourself, could you? I couldn't. <laughs> I so wasn't able to do it. I almost did because okay. I kind of am older now. When you have seven grandkids and your kids have been in the industry over half a dozen years and they're, you know, one's got five kids, the other one's got two, you recognize that you're clearly not a young pup anymore. You're still not in college yourself, are you? No, no. And so it, it's that transitional time in our lives, I guess. And yet, you know what's interesting about that? Let me just segue for a minute. Really? Yes, because sometimes people think you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And one thing that we've prided ourselves on is being on the bleeding edge of technology. Yeah. Making sure that when something came out that would help promote or, or make life easier for our sellers, whether it's uh, digital signatures now, uh, whatever it is, we've endorsed it 100%. Yeah. We've hired people that understand it, that, that utilize uh, graphic technologies and cameras and all that kind of stuff. We endorse change. So you can teach an old dog new tricks. I remember our first video camera. We paid so much money for that thing. And it was so bad. And our first <laughs> digital camera, because we used to have to take the pictures, run to the camera lab, get them back, photo, I, don't, I guess we scanned them. There wasn't even scanning then. I don't even know what we did. I guess we just submitted the photos to the board. Yeah, that's all we did. And at one point, the board would take one outside shot. So we would pay a certain fee. They'd go take the outside. There was a roaming camera guy who took an outside picture. There were no inside pictures. Black and, and white. Black and white, one outside now shot. Now you're aging yourself, yeah. 
Well, it's okay. Truth. That's a whole different show. We can do a show on this and that. Oh. We've done that. Yes, we there have. There are nice. archive shows that's, around that's that, true. so people could okay. just go to that. All right. So yes, you can get references. That's great. I'm going to cut you oh, off yeah. and move to no, the next question. No, because I haven't answered that fully. I thought you did. No. Okay, go. Okay, thank you. And you're appreciative that I'm listening. I'm not letting him cut me off, aren't you? Well, he does it anyway. Anyhow, the other opportunity to get references, and quite a few of our clients are eager to do this, and that is if you're somebody that, in addition to the testimonials that are out there or the words of um, expression of how somebody's experienced us before, if and watching the shows and seeing somebody talk to us live, if yet you want to talk to somebody with your specific one-on-one -on -one questions, we have quite a few clients that are actually keen and eager to have a phone conversation with you. And so lately that's become something that we've done more of when somebody's a little hesitant, they've had maybe an okay experience in the past with a realtor, maybe they don't have a lot of people that already know us that they've worked with us and yet they've just seen our sold signs in the area and they want to get a unbiased third party, somebody that isn't one of our friends that we haven't done business with for the last 30 years, but a client that recently has come to us, maybe through marketing, maybe through a recommendation, who's willing to answer authentically and, and completely the questions they might have. Those references are available as well. So you can have references in writing, you can have references by email, you can even read some of the great cards that we get from our clients. We used to actually keep a book for years before the whole video mm. thing existed. I had a book that had hundreds of letters and cards and notes from people in it. And in fact, the surveys, the follow-up surveys after an experience, those in there so that people could read it. Yeah, we even had one for buyers, one for sellers. It was yeah. two different binders. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like that fat. Yes. Yeah, so are, are you done now? Yeah. So if you want a reference and you want to talk to somebody, all you have to do is ask us. We'll give you a name and a phone number and you can call them. And you're even welcome to say to them, how did you meet them? And who do you know that we should talk to? Like it doesn't even have to be people that we can directly reference you to. You're welcome to go a little further abroad because then you're getting the truth. Okay. So another question is, what's involved with the listing agreement? Like, when does it start? When does it finish? Are there any guarantees that you offer? Uh, that kind of thing, you know? So the great thing with our listing agreements is first, before we ever even sign one, we want to make sure as much as you want to make sure that we actually should be in business together. It's kind of important. And I think when I first got Re, that that sense of understanding that it was much about as much about me choosing or the team choosing if they were able to help someone if I already know going into it that the price point somebody wants to put on their house or the marketing that they want me to do that maybe I know that I know that I know is not effective or they don't want to price the home in relative to condition or the limited access. I had a home just recently that I actually was showing to one of my buyers and we could only get in once a week on a very short timeline. We did wait till then, got in, loved it, decided it was the home for them and needed a second look before we could make a decision. Not only were we told no for that second decision or a second viewing, so we put the offer in anyway, then we were actually told that they couldn't accommodate our irrevocable and we'd given them lots of time to consider the offer. And then we were told that we'd had to wait for the building inspection until the week later at that same given timeline before we could actually do a building inspection. Crazy. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody was looking to be... Did you end up buying it? No. No, imagine Because that. we couldn't. Limited access and no time... Right. Some people are in a hurry to buy a house. Well, they were ready. They were cash out of town buyers. I'd called the realtor, had many conversations with the realtor and said, like, I'm, this is somebody that really wants the house. And he said he parked in their laneway, waited for them to come home. They didn't come home by 10 o'clock. He went there the next day, finally met with them. It was just difficult. Now, that's an extreme case. So I'm not suggesting those people are that challenging. And yet I wouldn't have taken on that listing because I can't sell it. So if I can't help you do what you say you want me to do, then I'm hurting you and I'm hurting me. So there are times that we're not even gonna enter into the listing agreement, okay. both from your perspective potentially and from mine. So that's where it starts. We've gotta know that we wanna be in a mutually beneficial 
business relationship to get your home sold. The intent of the listing agreement is simply to lay out the parameters of what it's going to look like for us to get your home sold. What inclusions you want to have there, what timeline you're looking at in terms of possession date after we get an offer, price is obviously an important piece. So we're going to lay out what marketing services do you want and therefore the associated marketing fees. So all of those things are going to be laid out in the agreement. The agreement from my perspective is completely, 100% in control of my seller's hands. So although we're gonna sign an agreement that generally is somewhere in the neighborhood of a year, simply because if we're doing a great job and maybe you're a difficult property and the market is just gonna demand that long, then we're gonna be in relationship until we get the job done, until the market allows us to get the job done often. I mean, our homes sell anywhere from one day mm-hmm. onward. Mm-hmm. On occasion, we have anniversaries. <laughs> and the anniversary, I just had a client today, the other day, that uh, we're having an anniversary. And they were with many realtors in the past. And we decided that although the pricing I decided, they decided, the relationship was right, even though it's a unique property, even though it may or may not be exactly priced where it needs to be, we're willing to stay with each other until we find the right buyer for the unique property. So there are times that you're going to want to enter into something knowing right. <clears throat> or believing that it may take a little longer. Okay. So you can easily be excused from the listing regardless of what it says on paper because we do provide to all of our sellers an easy exit guarantee. Because what I've learned, and I learned this I guess 25 years ago, is if the relationship's not working for you as a seller, I can promise you it's all not working for me as a buyer or buyer, as an (laughs) agent. Sometimes I'm a buyer of property. I do own quite a few real estate properties. So anyway, If it's not working for you, it's probably not working for me. So therefore, we leave the control of the listing agreement in the hands of our seller. Because sometimes what you believe is going to happen isn't the way it comes together. Great. So if you're just joining us on the inside track on real estate, that's what you're listening to. And I'm Ken Decker, and this is Yetta Decker. And we are discussing questions to ask a realtor, whether it be the Decker team or any other realtor that you may be interviewing for the position of marketing and selling your home. So let's continue on. Okay. And this is show number four around the questions. And so the question, so we're going to keep going because there seems to be so many and to give a thorough answer seems to be taking more time than we had anticipated. I think when we started this, we thought it was going to be two shows max Mm -hmm. and we're thinking it's going to be five or six. Is there anything I need to disclose about my home? Well, we talked a little bit about that in part three Mm -hmm. and anything that might be hidden that you're aware of you should disclose because disclosure creates a better trust relationship because after a building inspection many of those things that may not be visible initially are Mm -hmm. discovered when there's a more thorough investigation of the property so disclosing things that could come back to bite you later is a really good idea Anything that might be a stigma attached to the property is something you want to disclose. You don't want to disclose anything, absolutely anything to do with your personal life. It's really nobody's business. So you want to keep personal facts out of the conversation. You want to disclose that to your realtor so that they can best aid you and help you figure out how to navigate this real estate experience. And yet there are things that the realtor are going to keep very um, quiet because really it doesn't change the value of the home. It doesn't change much of anything. So when I'm asked why somebody moving, my pretty standard answer is it's time for them to make a move. Um, You know, occasionally it's evident the reason because it's in the name of an estate or it's you can see by the the fee or even by the vacancy of the house that it's a relocation there's different ways of figuring that out a power of sale you can tell because it actually has to have different schedules attached so there are times where the reason and motivation for selling is disclosed Mm -hmm. that's not generally what we're talking about here we're talking about anything that could adversely or positively affect the value of your home that we want to disclose those things so we can use them from a marketing perspective and also let's say we know that it doesn't meet fire code 
in a particular area. Maybe it's something mm -hmm. that's duplexed or has an <clears throat> unlegal apartment or mm -hmm. something. Those things we want to disclose and we'll put right in the realtor remarks sometimes because now we can say price reflects X. And then right. it's not a surprise, and now we're not negotiating a second time. It's or probably, the wood stove is not wet certified or whatever, right. that kind of stuff. Right, because yeah. there are things that often we're not adding extra dollars for anyway, and yet when they're not functioning or functioning correctly, then people take away money for them. Except we never added money for them in the first place. Mm -hmm. So disclosures can be things that can aid us in marketing the home for you well as well as those things that you must disclose so that you don't get yourself in potential legal liability. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you proactively look for buyers for my home? Well, yes. And That's what's that important. look like? Yeah, what's that look um, like? So we do a lot of different things. We're very assertive with our marketing, have a marketing specialist on the team. So that helps a lot in getting the word out there for a specific property or all our specific properties. And then in addition to that, we do connect daily, everybody on the team, with people from the general public as well as with potential buyers. We're actually calling and emailing and texting and going to networking events and on and on goes the list of ways of reaching out and finding out um, who else is looking to make a move. You'll know that if you know me well, I will quite frequently ask, who do you know that needs the help of a realtor that would like the help of this realtor? And that's proactively looking for buyers that may in fact buy your home. That's one way. Another is when we have an open house, we phone into the area or door knock around it looking to see who they know that may be thinking of buying or selling a home. Phoning into, if you're on the do not call list, we don't phone you. Otherwise, uh, we do routinely call into the communities looking for people that may be looking for a home mm -hmm. and asking those that we know, who do they know that's looking for a home. So right now, even if you know somebody that's thinking of making a move and it's not you and you think we would be a great fit for them, whether they're thinking of selling a home or buying a home, call us. Or investing in real estate, which is a buying a home too. It's just a very um, niche market mm -hmm. of a niche segment of the market. So actively looking for buyers for your homes through marketing of your property, as well as just in general looking for buyers. Okay, so if you find a buyer, yeah, how do you qualify them to make sure they should be coming into my home so that I'm not needlessly disturbed by people that can't, can't buy it or shouldn't be buying it or it doesn't fit the number of rooms or something like that, yeah. right? Yeah, because there's probably nothing more frustrating for a seller than to be given feedback that is obvious. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, so I needed four bedrooms and it and was obviously advertised as a three bedroom. So well, because, why did they bring them through? Right. And I think sometimes that simply is they're willing to consider three, but really they want four. And so then when they look at it, maybe the value's not quite what they thought. And so now they just go back to their revert back to their initial desired. So they're still qualified. It's just a, it's a frustrating piece of feedback. And I apologize in advance for all my <laughs> sellers that I'm going to be working with that get that experience because that unfortunately it does happen. Mm -hmm. So in terms of qualifying the buyer, it's often a financial conversation. So absolutely, before we want to take people through your home, we want to know where they're at in the process. What have they already done? What can they afford? Have, do they know? And if they don't know, we don't want to say no to somebody. And at the same time, we don't want to say yes to somebody and waste your time. Mm -hmm. So we want to get as many answers to those questions in advance of ever taking somebody into the home. Now, if it's a buyer we're currently working with, it's on, um, we're in relationship with, and we have a, a buyer representation agreement with them, and there's somebody, they will definitely have been pre-approved. We're going to know their financial situation. They're going to know their financial situation, more importantly, and know that we're looking at the right price range of property and in the right area with the right features and all that sort of stuff. So they're very qualified by the time we take them to your home. A little more challenging to completely qualify somebody from the general public because if somebody's calling off our marketing, whether it's the internet or whether it's a sign or, or whether it's any other medium through a friend, through a brochure, we may not have significant relationship with them. 
Mm -hmm. So we are going to ask some very preliminary questions to get an understanding. If we really get the sense that they just really aren't going to buy and they're really not interested, they're just doing it for kicks, then if we're going to agree to show it to them, because it's a waste of our time as well as your time as a seller, we're going to ask you if it's okay. We're going to have that conversation or in fact, we're not going to show it to them. The challenge is if they call enough realtors and they really want to see it, somebody's going to show it to them. So better yeah. us as the listing agent, and even if they're not as qualified as and, we would like them I've, to be. I've also had people who, you know, they're not really thinking of selling or buying. Yeah. And they go into an open house or they walk in or they see something on the internet and they go, oh, I want to see this because it's striked something in my head. They're going to go in and sometimes yeah. seeing it is enough to make them go into action. So. So sometimes we have to do that. Yeah. Now you have a couple properties you'd like to promote for some of our great sellers, right? Yeah, I want to share with you some really cool opportunities and they're very different and yet they're essentially around the same ballpark price-wise. And so one of them is 317,000. Um, 900. 500. I think. 500, yeah. yeah. 317, 5. That's right. And it is a really beautifully maintained, exquisite, high ceiling, soaring ceilings actually, really tall, one bedroom condominium apartment right at the streetscape, right in town, beautifully situated, pretty, 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 well cared for, all contemporary, modern wonderful little spot kind of cozy because it's not huge and yet a beautiful place if you want to be within walking distance to amenities if you want to be in the hubbub of all that Ottawa has to offer you want to be easy on transit it's just down there from where the property is located so you want to call me about that one and then the other thing at around the same price range so depending on what extreme you want your lifestyle to be. It is listed 325,000 and it is a bungalow with an in-law suite. So it has income potential. It's got lots of space on the main house side. And then it's also got a one bedroom in-law suite attached to the property. Lots of garage space, garage space, lots of exterior space located in the village of Russell. So in town, out of town, same price. So often people will say to me, you know, what price range do I have to spend? Well, it, the more is a conversation of where do you want to be? Mm -hmm. What do you want for that amount of money? Because as you can see, for 325000 or thereabouts, 317500 and 325000 you can have two very extreme opportunities. And I could go right, yeah. very different opportunities. And it could, we also have some great townhomes that are located in that price range as mm -hmm. well. So it could be a townhouse home in suburbia, a sprawling bungalow in a village life, or a down in town condominium apartment. Cool. Yeah. Well, lots to choose from. If you'd like any information on any property that's in the Ottawa or surrounding area, give the Decker team a call at six one three. 860-4663. That's 613-860-4663. And we'd love to help you. Thanks for listening to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And thanks for watching if you're watching. So the archive shows are at chri.ca and deckerteam.com. Thanks for hanging out with us.